I also used to buy things from online things like, um, see, I can't even remember the names of the shopping apps. This is a good sign. Hi everyone, welcome back to Project Happy Home. For those of you who are new here, I'm Tanya, a doctor lawyer turned homeschool mom of three kids ages 10, seven, and five. If you are interested in videos about secular homeschooling, raising a child with ADHD, and living a more essentialist, intentional lifestyle, you have come to the right place, so be sure to hit that subscribe button right below the video. In today's video, I'm gonna be wrapping up my no by year for you guys. If you've been following along the entire time, you know that I started the no by year right in January of 2019, and I ended it out somewhere at the beginning of December, I would say, just as Christmas shopping started ramping up and things like that. However, in one way, the no-buy year never actually ended for me because the way that I set up my no-buy was really more of a low-buy in the sense that there were some categories of goods where I didn't buy anything at all like makeup and clothes and shoes, but there were some categories where I allowed myself a little bit of leeway as the year went on because that's just who I am, like with books. So before I get into all of that, I just want to let you know how I'm going to address my no by year. I think it's really split into three prongs. One financial in terms of how much I spent and how my no by affected like our actual spending habits. Two is physical, like how much physical clutter disappeared? What is my physical environment now as a result of my no by year? And three is emotional, like how did my emotional health change? Um, throughout this process. In terms of financially, there was definitely a marked difference, obviously, because I bought way less things. So when you are purchasing way less, especially when you're doing far less online shopping, that decreases the amount of outgoing cash by a lot. So our financial um, statements just reflected that change quite significantly, a quite drastic difference in credit card bills, in Amazon purchases. And by the way, if you are interested in seeing how your Amazon purchases have stacked up over the years, there is a very easy way to do that. And Amazon will even send you like a little Excel spreadsheet laying out for you item by item how much you have spent on Amazon throughout the years. Let me warn you ahead of time that this is shocking news because it gives you like a real Excel spreadsheet where it tells you like the listed item price and like what price you bought it for. For example, if you bought it on like a lightning deal or something, and then it gives you that wonderful total at the bottom of your Excel spreadsheet. You can limit it by exact time windows, like how much did I spend in April of 2019 or how much did I spend in the entire year of 2019. And it was really interesting to dig into that and see how that evolved over time in terms of different time periods in my life, different stressors going on, whether we were moving, whether we were not, whether we were having a baby, etc. So I definitely recommend it to you. If you guys want an actual tutorial walkthrough on how to see your Amazon spending, let me know in the comments down below and I will definitely put that into my video queue. Straight up, financially, it was a huge boon. When you cut down your online shopping as much as I did in this past year, you see that. Before in the past, any time I felt the need to get anything, whether it was metal straws or an extra notebook or art set or something, I would just add it to my Amazon cart and check out because I am an Amazon Prime member. This year, one of the things I instituted for Amazon in particular was just a checkout day. It used to be a checkout day per week. It became sort of like two checkout days per month and I would just leave things in my cart and build up my cart, and if there was anything I didn't have an immediate need for, I would just take it out. And that was a really nice way of allowing myself to indulge for a second in the want of it all. Like, I want that new uh, journal, but then to come to that day for checkout, that designated checkout day about you know 10 days later or two weeks later and say to myself, well, I don't really need that. I have a million like composition notebooks lying around. So just taking it out of the cart and adding it to the save for later pile or putting it into a wish list was really, really helpful for me. Another thing that financially was helpful was just how I didn't go into stores anymore. Specifically, some of the stores that I didn't go into were Ross, the Dollar Tree, Target for the dollar spot. You know how you have those two entrances into Target? You can go through the grocery section or the everything else section. I stopped going into the everything else section, which really, really cut down on me seeing everything else, um, especially the dollar spot section. I always considered myself a savvy shopper, somebody who didn't waste money, somebody who didn't shop at places like you know, Nordstrom or the mall or things like that, but you spend your money wherever you end up shopping. So 
cutting out stores like that entirely, like I think I went into Ross once last year and it was for a specific gift item that I wanted to look for. I didn't go to TJ Maxx at all. I went to Dollar Tree maybe once to get some seasonal crafts for the kids. Not going really, really helped. Another place I didn't go was Ollie's. I don't know if you guys live in the North Carolina area, but Ollie's has so many discount books and it was wonderful and glorious before when I used shopping for books as like an emotional crutch. Taking that away, that opportunity away, just help me spend less. So. Financially, it was obviously, obviously a boon. The second prong would be the physical environment that I live in. Now, we downsized when we moved to North Carolina by over 2,200 square feet, well over. In my previous spacious, everything is bigger in Texas house, you can hide your clutter. You can hide your tendency to gather hundreds of books a month your tendency to gather not one headband, but the 12 headband pack from Amazon. You can hide all of that in very neat organized bins and still have a lot of breathing room in your house. When you downsize and you lose more than half of your living space, suddenly all of your previous shopping habits and all of your like collections of things come to the forefront. And that definitely happened in this house. So it was really important to me that I do a no by year so that we quell the influx of items. I had already become pretty good at encouraging the outflow of items. We have a couple of set up things that encourage continuous decluttering of our house and that was already in place. For example, we always have a donation bin in the garage. Every Saturday we do three things blessing with the kids. So all five of us come up with at least three things to donate. That's 15 things a week. That's quite a few things a year. Do the math, 15 times 52. <laughs> and basically simply having things going out of the house was not quelling the influx. And so we were still having more things coming in because when you think of a new box of pens that you heard about online, you don't think of it as taking up space in your home but it does. That extra box of 12 pens takes up exactly that much room and you have to put it in a drawer somewhere and you have to shove other things to the side and put something else under something else and just create more clutter. So just not buying for a year, cut down on that type of influx so, so much. Because when you see that Amazon box come in, it's easy to tell yourself, you know, a lot of that is air fluff and those packs of air, but a lot of it isn't. A lot of it is exactly that much square footage being occupied in your house by something you were living perfectly fine without the day before. So in terms of our physical space, instituting a no buy year definitely, definitely cut down on how much we have in this house. And I cannot tell you how dramatic a shift that was because before we would just have a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more every month, even though we had a steady outflow. And when you keep a steady outflow of things for decluttering and you stop the influx, your house starts to look better. Your drawers start to look cleaner. Your closet starts to be more spacious. You can move your shirts around. You can move your, your makeup items around. Everything starts to feel a little bit more airy and light, and it's not that hard to do. And the third prong of all of this would be my emotional health and how it has shifted with this no buy. I think that we all have different reasons for why we shop and why we spend money. We all have different ways that we shop. Some of us like to shop in person. Some of us like to shop online. Some of us like to shop in malls. Some of us like to shop in little boutiques. Some of us like to just buy books and stationery and planning items and craft things. Other people like to buy clothes and shoes. Other people like to buy makeup palettes. As women in particular, I think our shopping habits are so entwined with our emotional well-being. I think that culturally, Shopping has become known as a reward. If you are feeling depressed, you can go and buy yourself a trinket or a pair of shoes and that should give you a boost and you deserve it because you're a good person and you work hard, etc. If you're feeling happy, for example, if you've gotten a promotion at work or you've gotten a date or you have something to look forward to like a wedding or you know a graduation, you can reward yourself. You can get something new for that event. You deserve it. You've done so well. If you're making more money, your salary bump has increased, well, now you can afford that next tier of makeup, that next tier of shoe or sweater or store. 
And that sort of lifestyle creep is, is just as real as shopping when we feel sad. Yeah. The reasons we shop are varied, but the end result is the same. We spend money on things that we were doing perfectly well without. We increase the amount of physical clutter in our lives, and we increase the amount of things that we are now responsible for, that we have to take care of. When you buy that box of pens or that new pair of shoes, that's another thing you have to find a place for that you have to put away at the end of the day that you have to clean and maintain and take care of. It's taking up space in your brain. <laughs> it's taking up space in your heart. Um, I find that the less nice things I have, the less I have to worry about with my kids, honestly. Yeah. You know, in terms of home decor, for example, I didn't buy anything this year. Not one single solitary vase or trinket dish or cup, nothing. Just that action has made me feel so much better about <laughs> my kids like breaking something occasionally or, or painting something that shouldn't have been painted or whatever, because it's just a thing. And it's an older thing at that, you know? It's not something that holds as much emotional intensity for me anymore because it's not that new. I've had it forever. It's okay. It's going to be fine. And I already have so much stuff that if something happens to something, I'm like, yay, now we can get rid of that. So it definitely shifts your mindset. I think another emotional reason that we shop, and this one resonated the most with me, was just boredom and anxiety. It was a way to quell my boredom in the evenings when my husband would be asleep and I would just be laying in bed, I mean, stretched taut, you know, stretched thin, just thinking all of these thoughts about all of these things, about children and school and work and my life choices and where we were gonna live and how we were gonna stay here and da 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 Friendships and family and my parents and my brother and all of these things that roll through a woman's head all night long. The way for me to shut that down, to not touch it too closely, to kind of quiet that anxious roll of thoughts was to shop. You know, I loved my um, flash sale apps. I liked Amazon, obviously. I liked just going through even sites like ThreadUp, things where I felt like, you know, I'm saving money because I'm not spending that much money. Stopping that behavior, deleting the shopping apps off my phone, not being able to quell my anxiety that way was difficult. It was really difficult. And for a while there, particularly in the spring, like three or four months in, I had this huge upsurge of anxiety because I wasn't having my normal outlet. I wasn't being able to, you know, take two hours on the weekend and go thrifting by myself and relax that way. I wasn't able to unwind at night by scrolling through different art supplies or journals or, or school supplies that I could convince myself that were helpful and that we needed. Not being able to quell my anxiety that way was difficult. It really was. There was a day when I left Costco and I didn't buy any books from the book section. And I know this sounds silly, but that was a real stress relief for me. You know, Costco's stressful and you're buying all the things and you're doing the mom thing and you're buying salmon and you're buying cereal and you're buying like, you know, barbecue sauce or whatever. And then you have this little reward in the middle where you get to buy your books. You know, for me, that was a reward and not doing it made me feel physically ill when I left that store, like I was trying to tell myself, you did so good, you didn't buy anything, you're awesome, yay, Tanya. <laughs> and I got to the car and I just felt queasy, like I felt sick about not having had my fix. And it was just a fix. It was an addiction that I didn't realize that I had. And breaking that addiction was as painful as you would imagine. It is something your brain has become accustomed to a way of comforting yourself that you have trained yourself in. To undo that training was difficult and maintaining a no buy was a great way for me to just erase that shopping habit as a comfort for my life. And I will tell you that by the time that fall and winter rolled around, scrolling through even Amazon for something I actually needed was tiring for me. Instead of being relaxing the way it had been before, it was just tiring and I felt like it was taking time away from my actual life. I think that I could have done a better job this year trying to inject other things that made me feel better. I would say that one of the things I did was I started to read more again, like just fun fiction. Not about homeschooling, not about improving myself as a wife, a mother, parent, sister, friend, <laughs> just 
just fun reading, you know, like romances and thrillers and mysteries and, you know, some deep reading, but lots of fluff so that I could just enjoy a hobby that I had liked for a long time. I took up crocheting again. I am definitely a beginner. I learn everything from YouTube videos, but that, that was another physical action that I found like was very good for relieving anxiety and stress, but didn't involve me buying anything because I had already bought vast quantities of yarn that were just sitting in my house. So all of these things, uh, were helpful to me. Financially, the no buy was a huge boon. It's super easy to tell. Remind me if you want to see exactly how to check out what you've spent on Amazon over the years. Shocking and horrifying as it is, I will do a video on that for you. Two, in terms of like the physical environment and how the no buy shifted that, it was a wonderful addition to our continuous system of decluttering because it just stopped the influx and the house started to clear out naturally. Three, emotionally speaking, I have definitely kicked the habit of shopping as a anxiety crutch. And I didn't know that I would, honestly. I didn't know that I was using shopping as much of a crutch as I was in terms of quelling my anxiety. And now that I've kicked that habit, I think that's the most valuable thing I can take away from this no buy year. So I thought you guys might be interested in just a category breakdown of how my no buy went. So in terms of books, the most hilarious thing is books are what I buy most of. But when I introduced the concept of a no buy year to my husband, I was all enthusiastic. I was like, I'm going to start a no buy year, except for books, obviously. And my husband looked at me and he's like, Tanya, the only thing you buy is books. <laughs> like that is 90% of what you buy. And I was like, oh, right. So I only bought about 30 books last year. That is a pretty large estimate. I think it might even be less than that, but I was trying to think of all the books I bought and I think it's somewhere between 25 and 30. And I think that is excellent for me. That's including Christmas presents and everything. And I am amazed by that number. It might sound like a lot to some of you, but I used to buy like 30 books a month, easy. So that was a huge plus to me. Homeschooling supplies, I bought very little to none because I didn't go to Target Dollar Spot, I didn't go thrifting, I didn't buy any new games. The children bought some new games because they spent their own money on them, but I didn't buy anything for them except for their birthdays and for Christmas. So that just cut down on that considerably. And honestly, there are still games that we have that we haven't played yet. In terms of skincare, I only bought new things that I was replacing. I tried one new company and that was True Botanicals. I really did like them and I will talk about them more at my product empties later. If you're interested in skincare, I can wax on and on about sunscreen and skincare till the cows come home. In terms of makeup, zero, zilch, zippo, nada, except for one thing. I bought um, some eyeliner from Beauty Counter from my friend Michelle over at A Common Life because she was running a little pop-up store for one of her friends who's a Beauty Counter consultant and I just wanted to support. And it was actually a really good eyeliner. I'm wearing it right now, if you are interested. Toiletries, I definitely cut down. I worked through a whole bunch of creams and body washes and random things that you accumulate because you do when you're just sort of an unconscious shopper. So I've been working through all of that stuff. Cleaning supplies, I cannot tell you, you guys, I had so many cleaning supplies stored in the garage because I'm one of these people, I really like cleaning supply commercials and I think that I'm gonna be that person if I buy that floor cleaner or toilet cleaner, but I'm not, I hate cleaning. Um, and I worked through everything that we had. I just used it all. The good stuff, the bad stuff, the, the stuff that's approved by the environmental working group, the stuff that's not, the bottles of Windex that I used to tell my husband were gonna kill us, all of that. I worked through all of it and now we are just in a clean zone. And so I have a Grove subscription now just to bring in what we need every month and that is it. Clothes, I did buy new underwear, you guys. I had been wearing the same underwear <laughs> for years and years and years. And you know how the elastic goes and you start to have those little weird things happening to your underwear. Anyway, I did buy new Amazon Essentials underwear and I will link them down below because they are remarkably cheap and really nice. And so I was really happy with that. I just bought a pack of underwear. In terms of other clothes, no jeans. I did buy one pair of shoes and I actually posted about them on Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, you should do that because you'll get a better idea of our daily life but I did buy a pair of cute little camo sneakers that I loved for like three weeks and then they started to hurt a little bit and it wasn't like being broken in properly. And I was like, you know what? I don't love these as much as I thought I did and I donated them even though they were only three weeks old because sometimes you can tell yourself all these things like, oh, they're new and, blah, 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 and I'll just give it another. When you know that you don't like something, you know. 
let it go. Let it pass on through the stream of goods into someone else's hands who can use it. So I sent it to a thrift store. Gifts for my husband, nada, zilch, zippo, nothing. He's always said he didn't want gifts. I always bought him gifts because I thought I should buy him gifts. This year, I didn't buy anything. It was great. He was happy, I was happy, no new things entered the house, I spent no money. In terms of home decor, I am super proud because when you stop thrifting or going to home goods, you stop buying home decor. I also used to buy things from online things like, um, see, I can't even remember the names of the shopping apps. This is a good sign. I really can't remember. Something about an elephant. I don't know. Anyway, I did not buy any home decor. No flowers, no vases, no plates, no prints, no anything. Nothing. Not even like a little doorstop, nothing. Um, kitchen stuff, nothing. No glass containers, no cups, no mugs, no kitschy cute llamas, nothing. Um, I'm really, really proud of that because it's cute. I like llamas as much as the next girl. I like porcelain cats. I like brass ducks. I like all of it, but I didn't buy any of it and that's the important thing. I can like it in the store and just not bring it home with me. It's like this brand new concept. Sheets, towels, stuff like that, nothing. That wasn't a hard one, honestly. That was just sort of something you buy because you're walking through Costco. You know at the beginning when Costco has all those big things to buy and you're like, ooh, beautiful plush towels. I could use beautiful plush towels. I didn't buy any of that, nothing. We're just using all the things we have and they're perfectly fine. Go figure. Last item that I tend to have problems with is planning and crafting supplies. Like think everything Michaels. I stopped going to Michael's, which helped. I didn't buy any new planning supplies except for teal pens, which I was using in my commonplace journal, which I love. I also bought for my birthday present to myself, I bought a pen case and you can see that in one of my um, update videos. And I did buy my new planners for 2020. However, some of my new planners are designed to be used for several years in a row. And that was just a new way of thinking about things so that I didn't have to purchase them every single year. So that's one way you can decrease um, the outflow of money for planner supplies. If you Overall, I'm really proud of myself. I'm really proud of the shifts this has made financially in terms of space and clutter and in terms of my emotional well-being. Am I gonna continue a no by year for next year? Yes, I am in short. I plan to institute new rules for myself it'll probably be more of a low buy year but i think i'm just going to keep going this way i don't have this urge to buy towels and home decor and new clothes i'll definitely loosen my regulations in terms of like if i see a pair of jeans that i like i think i'll get it but i'm definitely going to be more conscious of the one in one out rule uh, i don't want to add more stuff to our lives together and this year we are actually looking for a new house. We probably will get more square footage. I don't want to fill it. If you guys are interested in trying out a no buy year or a low buy year next year, be sure to subscribe to my channel because I will be doing a series of tip videos throughout the year. There will definitely be updates like this year, but more so than that, I'll be sharing what worked for me, practical tips like keeping an eye on your Amazon spending or you know setting up a donation box, things like that. So if you want practical, bite-sized, real world things that you can incorporate into your life to start a low buy or a no buy year, definitely hit that subscribe button down below and let me know what kinds of things would be the most helpful to you. I already have a whole set of ideas and videos that I have to plan, but I would love to be helpful to you and not just sort of like an echo chamber. So definitely comment down below. I read all the comments. If I've hearted your comment, I have definitely read it. At this point in my channel growth, I definitely don't have time to respond to every single comment, but I generally will read them for a few weeks and try to pin a comment up at the top if it's addressing a lot of people's concerns. So give me your video ideas down below. I look forward to working together and encouraging one another as we start a low buy or no buy year next year. You guys, thank you so much for being with me on this journey. I cannot tell you how much it has meant to me, your support, your comments. I like that we can learn from each other and this doesn't have to be just a one way type of me talking to you kind of situation. So let me know what you'd like to see next. As always, thank you so much for your time and I wish you the very best new year. 